Hello. Hello. So now that we've talked about radian in degree measure, and we've talked about um, the unit circle, a circle of unit radius that we used uh, to kind of uh, serve as our ruler, if you will, for angles. We're going to look at one of the nice uh, consequences of this, okay? Okay, and also I'm going to tie in what we were talking about from the get-go. So let's assume here that I have a unit circle. Okay, this is, again, this is a circle of radius 1. That's what a unit circle means. And let's assume that I have here, in fact, an angle. Okay. And let's assume that this angle uh, measures some amount, um, which we're going to refer to as theta. So you'll always, you'll often see the symbol theta used to represent some angle, okay? Some angles measure, okay? When we're talking in the abstract. Sometimes you'll also see phi. These are the common ones for denoting angles. Now what I want you to, what I want you to imagine now is that, okay, I have this angle, theta. I have it superimposed I have superimposed upon it rather I have superimposed upon it a coordinate system the x y axis in such a way that it's in standard position right and now I'm going to do something special that I haven't done before I'm going to drop the perpendicular from this point where it touches the circle to the x axis okay and since it's a unit circle this this uh, la this segment from the origin to the circle, uh, because the circle has radius 1, has length 1. Okay, so if I look at this triangle here, let me blow it up here to show you what's happening. Okay. This is the angle theta. This hypotenuse has length 1. This is the right angle, right? You see, this side is this. This is the, this part. The angle is theta. And now what I want you to notice is this. This, um, let's say that this point of intersection has coordinates x comma y. In terms of, uh, in terms of the lengths of the sides, well, if that point has length x, I mean, it has x coordinate x, that means it goes x this way. And if it has y coordinate y, it goes y upwards. And so this length has to be x, and this length has to be y, because we're starting at 0, 0. Right? So I have this situation here, x and y. Okay? That's, of course, the blow-up of this picture, of this right triangle that I have uh, put inside of this unit circle. Right? Okay? So now I'm going to show you something incredible. So basically, so basically, we know that, uh, as we mentioned before, for a right triangle that's drawn like this with this angle theta, the opposite labeled here, the adjacent labeled here, and the hypotenuse obviously the side opposite the right angle. We know that the sine of theta is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent of theta is the opposite divided by the adjacent. Well, look at here. Look at this. All I've done here is I've taken an angle in standard position. I've superimposed a unit circle onto it, right? And I've noted that if I find the point of intersection of that terminal side with the unit circle, um, it gives me some x y coordinates. And because it's a unit circle, the hypotenuse has length one. It leads to this triangle here. We can now use the relationship we learned before, which is here, to talk about, to, to reason in terms of this right triangle, right? Because these relationships holds for any right triangle. So for example, what is the sign here? The sine of theta, okay, will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. What is the opposite here? It's the y 
And what's the hypotenuse here? It's 1. But what is y over 1? It's just y. Okay? Similarly, the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is equal to the x, which is the adjacent, over the hypotenuse, which is 1. Okay? So it's x over 1, which is just x. And of course, if we wanted to, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite, which is, uh, well, let me write it down first, the opposite divided by the adjacent, right? And what is that? y over x. Okay. And so, now, What I want you to realize is what just happened here. What just happened is this. If I place an angle in standard position, um, if I place an angle in standard position and it intersects the unit circle, the and, it, and the terminal side, right, intersects the unit circle in the coordinates x, y, the sine of theta, the sine of that angle, will be the y-coordinate of that point. The cosine of theta will be the x-coordinate of that point. And the tangent of theta will be the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. So, in other words, we, we were now able, we, we originally started trigonometry with the idea of the right triangle, the idea that, uh, the idea that similarity uh, led to the property that uh, for any angle theta, for any angle of a given measure, okay, let's say the measure theta, the relationship between the opposite side and the hypotenuse, which we called the sine, would be a constant. So if you had the so if if you knew that the angle, now that we know how to measure angles, we can talk about an angle an angle's measure. So therefore, if you had a triangle with an angle of 30 degrees, the sine, the, the, the relationship between the opposite side of that 30 degrees to the hypotenuse would be the same no matter the size of the triangle. That's what we concluded originally. And that was how we got these properties from the similarity properties from a triangle. Now, what we just did was we just realized that we could form a right triangle into the unit circle like this and we are now able to assign um, to an angle the sine and cosine as being the inner or not assign we can now what we've done is we've um, we've now used those relationships to figure out um, a new way of thinking of what the sine and cosine are and that's going to lead us to the further development of the sine and cosine as functions in their own regard. Because one of the limitations of the right triangle trigonometry, which is very useful, of course, right? But one of the limitations is that we know that a triangle, the angles have to add up to 180 inside of a triangle. And so um, we could only ever think of taking the sine, cosine, and tangent of angles that are less than 90, okay? Right? So we, less, yeah, less than 90, basically. We can't go beyond 90, right? And, um, and we're going to see that now that will be a possibility, okay? And so, in other words, the key takeaway from this lecture that I want you to take away from is this, that once we have taken these facts from the right triangle trigonometry that we got originally, based on the similarity, once we pursue this construction, we were able to see that for any angle which is in standard position, that is to say whose vertex is on the origin, whose initial side overlaps the positive x-axis, and whose terminal side is somewhere else, um, when you open counterclockwise, of course, that intersection point gives us the sine and cosine of that angle, of the angle subtended, of the angle, uh, of the angle, um, 
in such a way that the cosine will be the x coordinate and the sine is the y coordinate. We're going to look at further uh, consequences of this later. Till then, I will see you at that future time. Thank you.